God bless you, Facebook. This is Robert Jenkins again. And yes, it is early in the morning. Uh, we're doing these messages that God has put on my heart concerning men. Uh, I do want women to listen as well because we need to learn about one another. And mothers need to understand how to raise sons and how to love husbands. And husbands need to learn how to raise sons and how to love their wife. So it's very key that we all listen together. But these uh, particular messages are for men and sons. Restoring manhood, restoring fathership, restoring sonship. So it's very key um, that we listen. I want to talk about today. First thing I want to talk about is early in the morning. You as a man, do you have a prayer life? When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing on your mind? When you go to bed, what is the first thing on your mind? Is it God? We must become God conscious. We must become God conscious. You can never be the man that God has called you to be if you're not God conscious. Very key. Um, and I talked about it yesterday, and I'm going to give a little bit today, right now, and even more this afternoon when I teach again. Um, Adam walked with God. You know, we don't know the time span, but he spent so much time with God. It's very important that a man spend time with God. One of the main problems with men is that they don't spend time with God. We, we spend time with our ideas. We spend time with women. We spend time with cars. We spend time watching sports. Even yesterday, I felt like a lot of people was not watching the message because it's probably was watching the game or getting ready to watch the game. And nothing wrong with watching the game. I end up watching it myself. But how much time do you spend with God? How much urgency do you have to spend with time? When you miss God, do you miss his presence? Do you miss what he says to you? Do you miss what you said to him? How much time, quality time, do you spend with God? Do y'all have conversations about yourself? Are you able to be open with God? Do you know be, you'll never be open with yourself and you'll never be open with your wife. And you'll never be open with people if you first can't have a real conversation with God. And that's so important. So I want to talk men spending time with God, intimate time with God, having conversations, listening to God. Can you hear the voice of God? As a man of God, can you hear the voice of God? Can you distinguish God's voice from your voice? It's very key that we do that. And we look, have to learn to do that. That comes by practicing. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, you have to spend time. Wake up in the morning. And what I do, um, God has taught me to be so grateful. I know that everything that ever will be, God already knows. He's omniscient. I know that. I know he's all, he's all knowing. I know that he plans everything. So my attitude with God is first, Lord, thank you. And man, we got to learn to say thank you. Lord, I thank you for life, health, and strength. I thank you for just being alive. I thank you for choosing me to be a man and you didn't make a mistake. I, I, God, I thank you that my steps are ordered by the Lord and you know exactly where I should be. And then I can begin to talk to God. I can begin to say things like, God, I've come to understand that you are a loving God. Help me become loving like you are. Help me how to sacrifice my life. I want to be made in your image and in your likeness and you created me that way. But I understand the fall of Adam. So God, anything that is still in me from my original DNA, restore me back to that. This is the things that you have to be able to say to God. And I ask you as a man of God, can you pray? Not a religious prayer. I'm not talking about trying to be deep in church. Can you have a real intimate time with God? Do you know how to talk to God? When the last time that you and God had a conversation and you cried, you weep. When the last time were you broken? I mean, broken in your spirit in a positive way because you were so grateful and so thankful for God, for what he did in your life and how he saves you and how he redeems you. We got to have that relationship. We don't spend enough time with God. When you get up in the morning, can you get up in the earth in the morning and just spend time with God? See, we've been conditioned to get up in the morning and go to work. And some of you right now are on your way to work and some of you are probably at work and you have to watch this later. And you can get up every morning at 530, 5 o'clock in the morning and prepare yourself for the job. But can you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning? Can you sacrifice an extra hour early and get up and spend time with God? And I mean, just really have a real conversation with God and spend time with God. Have you asked God to consume you? I've been asking God to consume me. You know, when I look at my life, I am not, um, I am not proud at all. It, even though as great as, as people say I am and people be blessed by the word, Robert Jenkins is not, um, he's, 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 he's not. And I say it again, Robert Jenkins is not proud. Um, the devil had, had me in so many ways and had me in captivity. And I know my purpose in God. When I look back on my life, I'm thankful because God didn't have to save me. He didn't have to redeem me. He didn't have to give me back his mind and his passion and his love. So because of that, I'm asking God, God, consume me. I never want to ever 
be that person again. And I'm talking about visible sins and invisible things, invisible thoughts, the captivity that I used to be in. I used to walk, walk around earth and be so sad, didn't want to live. I mean, there's so many things that I struggle from within. And men, we struggle from a lot of things from within. But I'm, I'm thankful now that when I wake up in the morning, I'm happy. I'm happy. And you know where my first happiness is? My first happiness is where I am in God. My life can be going crazy. It can be transitional things that I'm going through. But one thing that I'm glad, and I don't care if the house is crazy. I don't care if the, the wife and the kids. I don't care if the job situation. You know your first place that you should be happy in is your place in God. Your position in God. And I am so glad that I am. That I, I really believe right now that if I stood before God himself, he would say, well done, good and faithful servant. My whole attitude and my whole purpose, my whole, um, it, my whole st striving is to please him. Men, do you want to please God in every thought, in every deed, in everything that you do? I want to please God in all that I am, in every thought. I mean, even hidden things. I don't, no more hidden things. Everything is open to the light. And that's how I live my life. And I'm telling you, that's what God is calling us as men. We got to walk with God. So I first want to talk to you from Genesis. And the Bible talking about the, the, the Lord God formed. I mean, well, he created man out of the dust of the ground. And he breathed into man the breath of life. You're carrying God's breath. You're carrying the breath of life. What are you doing with the breath of God? What are you doing with the life of God? Are you living that, it's called Greek, in the Greek word, it's called Zoe. Are you living that Zoe life? That life that God wants you to live? And that's very key. Is it even the passion that you desire? You know what? And, and, and you ought to long for that. You know, when I was young, and it, oh, a couple of years of my life, I, we did celebrate Christmas. My mother had stopped celebrating Christmas for a little while. But a couple of years, we did have Christmas. And I remember, uh, didn't even want to go to bed that night. And when I did what went to bed, I went with so much enthusiasm on my mind to wake up early as I could because there was a gift waiting for me underneath the tree and I knew that I was going to be blessed with some toys and I would be able to play and I was so excited. Do you have that same intensity as you had as a child about Christmas that you have for God? But you can't wake up the next morning because you know every day that you wake up you're going to be more like him and this may sound strange and this may sound kind of crazy but we got to get back to an overwhelming presence of God in our life. I'm trying to walk with God as a man of God, that the very presence of God be on my life. I want to carry that anointing. I get jealous when I read the scriptures that Moses went to the mountaintop and spent time with God and came down. They had to put a veil over his face, a veil over his face because of the glory of God. And Moses is no greater than me. Moses is a man like I am a man. And he's a man that chose to follow God and God's instructions like I'm choosing to follow God. I want that glory of God on my life. And I don't have to walk around with a veil of my face. But I do want to know that the presence of God is in my life as a man of God. And that's more important to me than anything. And man, we got to get back with intensity. Intensity to be like him. I mean enthusiasm to be deliberate to be in his presence. To call for him. To, to veil to say, Lord, where are you? No, God, I know that you're there and I believe that you're in my heart, but I want to feel your presence. I want to feel your presence to the point, you know, somebody can tell you some truth sometime and your hair stand up on your arm and you say, my God, I got chills. I want to walk around with chills, longing to be with him, longing to spend time with God, longing. I dare not look back over my life and how much I gave to the devil. How much emotions I gave to the devil. How much my intellect. How much I choose to carry his bitterness and his unforgiveness. And now I'm a vessel for God. Made and designed for God. And he wants to live in me. He, he, he tells me that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That I actually can carry the Holy Spirit in my life and in my conscience and in my will. I want all of God. I want everything of God. I want everything of God to the point that my body lines up. My kidneys know that God is here. We must do right. My intestines know God is in this person. We must do right. And my body lines up. My emotion lines up. My thought. Because I'm longing to be like him. I, I moved away from, you know, when I was young, I, I, I love martial arts. And I used to want to be like Bruce Lee. And I wanted to move like Bruce Lee. And I wanted to dance like Bruce Lee. Well, Bruce Lee is no longer my idol. I want to be like God. And when I read the Bible, when I read the scriptures, when I get that word from the Lord, I, I read, I want to be holy like him. 
God is holy. And the angels will declare it. Holy, holy, holy. I want to have that. His name was, was holy. His name and his nature. He lived the way that even the devil was threatened by his very presence. Demons would come out. I don't want to be able to walk in my job. Walk in my home, walk in my family and in my community, and demons are sitting in the living room with me. No, I want to have so much of the presence of God that everything that's not like God is shaken up. We got to get that presence. I am here to make a difference. You are here to make a difference. But you can't make a difference if you don't have the presence of God on your life. And I'm telling you something. You got to fight to have this presence. You got to fight the even reality of life. Life will get you so tied up in between going to work and in between raising kids, in between putting on your clothes and cutting the grass, in between doing things in the community and calling your mother and you got to eat and then you got to dress and you got to take a bath and then you got to go back to work. These things will get you so caught up that you won't have time to be consume but we must take our time men we got to learn how to get up early we got to learn how to go to bed early and i'm telling you something that we have to learn how to do you got to learn this it ain't gonna come natural just because you're hearing this tape you may be getting excited and yes that's what i want to be it takes effort it takes effort. It takes effort. It takes discipline. And men, we are so out of shape. We're out of shape physically. We're out of shape spiritually that you're going to have to practice it. And you may miss it the next morning and the next morning. But your mind must be made up that I'm going to get it. I'm going after God. And you know, we love the single song. As the deer panteth after the water brook, so my soul, my soul longs for you. Do your soul longs for God. I mean, long for presence. For presence. And I remember, I am envious of some of my past when it comes to when I was with God. I used to be with God so much that my face, I could feel the presence of God on my face. Tears would come down my eyes. I could think about God. And I would begin to smile. I don't want to give smile when we say, oh, we're going to Disney World. We're taking a vacation. And I go to smile. Or you know what? We're going to buy another dog. And I go to smile. Or I go to the music store and I see a brand new drum set. And I go to smile. I don't want nothing to have my smile more than God himself. The very presence. And I'm telling you, you would never become the man that you need to become if you don't push with this intensity. You got to go to bed with him on your mind. You've been consumed with sin. I didn't even know how far I had backslid. I didn't even know how far I had drifted away. I'm not talking about when I just stopped going to church. I'm talking about I had stopped from that yearning, that that, that craving. I, I got to have it. You know how a kid said, I got to have it, mama. I got to go. I got to go. Do you long for God? I'm saying God. I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about getting your praise on. I'm talking about sitting in his presence and being consumed by him. That you know that he is standing right next to you. You knew that he had consumed you. You had consumed you. That you that the presence of God is on you. That there's no way that you can carry any bitterness because you have too much God in your life. You can't afford to be bitter. You cannot afford to be frustrated. You know without a shadow of doubt, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He leads me and he guides me. But he, you know it. You know it. His mercy and His grace that follow me all the days of my life. You begin to have that presence and you begin to quote that word. I mean that word start oozing out of you. I'm going to give you a, a symbolic sign of how much presence you should have in God. You should have so much presence in God that if somebody took a knife and stab you, that God's presence would leak out. Not blood, not water. His presence. The word. I'm telling you, Paul said in him, I move, I live and move and have my being. I'm talking about, I'm asking men to get consuming God. I'm challenging you. Get on your face and labor before God. Beg him to come into your presence. Don't be satisfied with a clap of the hand. Don't be satisfied with just going to church or reading the Bible. I'm telling you, get an intensity. Cry out for him. Learn to put your body in a place where it knows how to bless God. When the last time you lift your hands, and I mean lift them all the way up, all the way up, and I am a man of God. When the last time you look in the mirror and say, I am a man of God, and I will bless you. I will bless you. My hands belong to you, God. My mouth belong to you, God. My heart, my, my whole body, every thought about me, God. Cleanse me. Wash me. Take me like we do when we clean the house. Get some bleach, God, and take everything impurity out of my life. I mean a longing for God. I'm not here to just give you an education and teach you some great revelations of the word. If anything, I want to bring you closer to the presence of God that you don't want to get in your car without him. You don't want to move without him. You don't, when you take a bath, I'm talking to you, man of God. I'm saying we must do that. And women, if you're listening, this is something that you begin to pray and intercede that, that God overtakes your husband, that he overtakes your son. We need men in this earth. We need men of God, men of God who stand with standards that the presence of God is on them. And I'm telling you, you want to fight some battles? You don't have to fight no battle when you get in the presence of God. He, that presence alone will do it. 
And I'm telling you, God is calling. He's calling for us to stand up and know we've been in the presence. We have been immersed. We have been baptized in the very presence. And when you get baptized in the presence of God, I'm talking about you get God represents holiness. So you're getting baptized in holiness. You're getting baptized in love. You're getting baptized in sacrificial uh, forgiveness. I'm talking to you laying your life down for your brother and you making a difference when you walk in the room, cancer leave, sugar diabetes leave. When you walk in the room, you take authority. Any demon that has any, any uh, uh, authority in your life now is loose from that authority because you have been given power to become. So first thing I'm saying, man, have a prayer life. Come on, let's get on our face. Let's labor. And there is some time that I feel it. And I'm telling you, and I'm overcoming some fears. Because most times as a man of God, we're afraid to be. You heard God called you to this. You know what God is telling you to do. I said, hear God tell me to go outside in the woods and pray. But I didn't want to go outside in the woods. You telling me to go outside in the woods and pray? Yes, I'm calling you to be different. You, you have a call in your life. And you have to know that. And sometimes you have to be extreme. You know, there's an old saying. Uh, uh, it, I think it goes something like, you got to change what you're doing. If you don't like where you're going, then you have to change what you're doing. You have to be radical. You have to be radical. You have to be radical for God. It takes radical, man of God. We're prideful. We, and we don't know how to, we don't know how to break our pride. Our pride to tell us, well, everybody clapping their hands, so I'm going to clap soft. No, go crazy. When you're at the ball game, you went crazy. You jump up, throw the popcorn all over the place. You're hollering to scream. When you was in the world, you was in a club, you danced, you dropped it like it was hot. You did all these things. You had no problem walking up on a woman you didn't know. You asked her for your phone number. You was radical when you was a drug dealer. You sold drugs. Sometimes you, you didn't care about the police knowing. You put yourself in harm's way. And now you're in God and you won't be radical. How can you be radical as a drug dealer? How can you be radical as a killer? How do you be how do, how do you be radical as a gang leader? How do you be radical as a Playboy, and now that you in God, you're being passive and you're being weak. I'm calling, I'm calling your manhood to a stage that God wants to see you, and He wants to prove, and He wants to look at you. And when He look at you, He want to see Himself. He want to see yourself in your language. He wants to see yourself in your disposition, how you carry yourself. He wants to see His character in you, and you got to be radical. You got to fight your flesh. Your flesh is not going to let you be this man of God that we're calling to be. To be a prayer warrior, to clap your hands like you crazy, and when, and when you do go to church, you give God praise. I mean, you have a deliberate praise, and you may have to run around the church. See, man, we got to do some, we got to do some crazy things because our pride will hold us still. But it's time to get loose. It's time to get free. It's time to do it. I'm telling you, without a doubt, and I'm not telling you something that I'm not doing with you. I'm doing it with you. We're gonna get on this. Uh, uh, we're gonna use. I'm telling you, in my mind, I'm taking over. Taking over, you hear me? Facebook. We gotta use it for the positive. Use it for God. This is a this is extreme. You wanna be famous, you want people to hear you, then get on there and talk about Jesus. So I'm taking that and we're gonna get on this Facebook and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna praise right here. I'm gonna put some music on, we're gonna praise right here. We we need men. You know, it's so deep. I look at these sometimes when I watch TV, they have the exercise program, and there's one man he's showing how to lose weight. Now they got dance exercising, and he's just dancing and dancing right on TV. And people buy these videos and you dance with him and you lose weight. Well, why can't we have a video where you praise with me and we lose weight because we're praising? We lose spiritual weight, we lose depression, we we kill principalities and power because I'm on YouTube with, with Jenkins and we up there praising God. Yeah, we can have church right here on this. We got to get radical. We got to get radical. And you need to watch another man praise God. Watch me bless God. Let me show you how you do it. You keep clapping your hands. You keep clapping your hands. You don't stop clapping your hands until something happens. Until a change comes. Until in, in, in your spirit you feel a breaking. And you ain't mad at daddy no more. And you ain't upset with mama no more. How did you know? I've been spending so much time with God. You know what? I ain't tripping over the bills no more. God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I spent so much time with God. You know what? I know without a doubt that God, who God put together, let no man put asunder. This marriage will work. You got to spend so much time with God that you come out with answers. You come out with creativity. You have an ideal in your mind that God is going to bless you and the kingdom. I will become a giver because I am a man of God. So there's some things I want you to practice today. I want you to begin to look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am a man of God. I am a man of God. And my life will line up as a man of God. Now, I want to talk to you if you're a preacher or teacher. Before you preach and before you teach, are you more impressed that you have lived your sermon? You have lived your life. 
You know without a shadow of a doubt. I ain't talking about fooling people. I'm talking about you and God know that you are lining yourself up. And the first thing you lining up yourself is your intent. God, I have a motive to bless you. Because it's not going to be perfect right away, but you got to have a desire. You say, I'm going to do this. My mind is made up. You know, when I was growing up, they sing this song. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm going to hold my head up. I'm going on with the Lord. You got to say that as a man of God. And I'm telling you, join with me. Join with me and being dedicated. A true man of God that we can take off our clothes and we can be naked before him and be have a smile on our face. Because we say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Search my heart. And that's our first principle as a man. So we're going to be prayerful. We're going to be in the presence of God. And we're longing for him. We're longing for him. I'm telling you, get some songs in your heart. Get some Bible verses and start walking in life and start start carrying that word. Start repeating that word. There's a friend of mine when I had a musical studio in Youngstown, Ohio. I was so impressed with his walk with God. He bought a keychain. You know, a lot of times we hear prophets that say, "Go if you if you believe God gonna give you a car, go buy your keychain." Well, this man bought a keychain, but it wasn't about a car. He bought a huge key keychain, and guess what the keychain was for? He went and got um, index cards, put the little hole in them, put them on the keychain, and it had scriptures. And all whenever he wasn't doing something, he would read his cards. And we'd be at the music studio, and I'd be mixing, so he's not doing nothing. He's reading the word, Isaiah 2 and 5, Jeremiah 3 and 4, Romans 8 and 7. He's reading the word. And I was so impressed that he wanted his mind to have the word. And to the point, he became a living word. I mean, whatever you was going through, he can give you a scripture. I'm talking about a man, not a woman. This was a man. Man, he had four kids. He had a wife. But he know how he had a successful marriage. You know how he was able to stand as a man of God? Because he kept the word on him. When the last time you took our time and read the Bible, man of God, get some index, write it down. When I was in, I was at one time I was homeless in Buffalo, New York, and I had to live in a shelter. And when I mean homeless, I mean I didn't have a home to live in, and I I, I was in a shelter, so I did doing the shelter. And God began to put on my heart to write the Bible. I got inspired by um, the movie Mark of X, so I began to write in I N the T H E beginning B. Begin to write the Bible. And God began to speak to me so much because I learned something when I read a book by W.E. Du Bois. He said that reading is passive, but writing is dominant. That reading is passive, but writing is dominant. So I began to write the Bible. And I began to learn the word of God. I'm telling you as a man of God, write the scriptures down. See, I'm talking about you want to become a great man of God. You want to get healed. You want to get delivered, whether you was raped, whether you, whether you was ostracized, whether you didn't have a father in your life. You talking about, well, I didn't have a father in my life. Quit complaining about not having a father in your life and begin to do the principles that's going to raise you as a son. God has a remedy for our problem. And you have to get in that word when you spend time with it. So I'm challenging you to go out and get your key ring and get you some index cards and start writing these scriptures down. I'm challenging you to get into that word. You're not going to be a man of God because you can wear a suit and tie and carry a Bible. You must know the Bible. You must understand some scriptures. You must know what the word of God says about your life. And when the devil come and tell you what you can't do, you can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. And you understand the word of God because you're living the word. You're walking the word. You'll never live right if you can't, if you can't read the word of God and get a revelation from the word. The word must become alive and give you a power. You must know the authority you've been given every, uh, against every unclean spirit. You want to get rid of pornography? Get in that word and the word of God will give you a power from it. We'll be able to, every unclean spirit, you come out of my mind, you come out of my thought. I will not surrender. My body belongs to God and you will have it with some power and some dignity. And when you speak, you will speak with authority. Because why? You are a man of God. Get in the mirror every day and tell yourself that and God Bring it up. The Holy Spirit will bring things back to your remembrance. I'm a man of God. So men of God don't cuss. Men of God, men of God don't drink. Men of God don't smoke. Men of God don't commit fornication or adultery. I'm a man of God. See, you got to have some standards that you live by, that you challenge yourself. Look in the mirror, and I will not lie to myself. Men of God do not lie. Men of God have integrity. And you got to say it until you see it. Did you hear me? You have to say it until you see it. You got to want it. And if you don't want it, say, God, I don't even want it, but help me want it. Help me want it. I, I fell in love with some characters that do not please you. But you, you want to look like your dad. You want to walk like your dad. You want to talk like your dad. I'm giving you healing medicine. 
That when Jesus, the Bible told us, when, when, when he shall come, we shall be like him. I'm trying to be like him now. I don't know when he coming. I ain't got time to get ready. I got to be ready. We got to be ready. So every day, every day, Lord, help me know how to be a man. How to be a man. How to be a And I can't be a man unless I see a man. And the only man you really want to see is your example is God. So God, reveal your presence to me that I know how to be. And when I get in that word, Listen, when you get in that word as a man, you begin to see a man. Oh, this is a man right here. Look at this. Look at Jesus. Here's a man. Here's a man who met a woman and she had all this oil and she washed, washed his feet, but he didn't take her home and didn't have sex with her. No, he did not. She honored him. She respected him. But everybody that respected and honored you, you shouldn't be sleeping with. Here's a man who knew how to handle women without messing it up their minds. Here's a man who knew how to carry himself. The Bible is full of examples of how to be a man. And if you don't get in that word, you'll never see the real man and spend time with God. And God will talk to you and tell you, tell you how to be a man. He'll tell you how to be responsible, how to be accountable, and how to humble yourself as a man. So I challenge you. I challenge you to prayer. I challenge you to look in that mirror. Physically, and then look at that spiritual mirror, which is the word of God. I challenge you to get up in the morning. You say, I don't know what to read first. I'm going to give you some. I want you to start reading Psalms 1, Proverbs 1, and John 1. Psalms 1, Proverbs 1, and John 1. And read the first verse. Stop. Read the very first verse of all those three. Psalms 1, Proverbs 1, and John 1. And when you read those, then sit back and say, God, Speak to me. Give me revelation knowledge of what you just said. How does that, how does that benefit me? How can I become this thing that I've just read? How do I do it? Blessed is the man that walked not in the council of the ungodly. How do I do that? How do I do that? When it talks about in Proverbs, this is the Psalms of Solomon. And it talks about David and it moves on. It talks about ordinance. How do I know this proverb? This thing that's going to make me wise and give me understanding. It's going to cause me to be putin, cause me to be, understand simple things, concepts. This proverb, this songs of Solomon, this whole thing. How do I understand this? And ask God to speak it and then, and then wait for him to answer. And ask him, cultivate me, God. Treat me like a flower. If there's any bugs in me, put it out. We are nothing but clay in the master's hand and God wants to mold us. So I challenge you as a man of God. And I'm going to speak. And I don't know when God is going to tell me to stop on this. But we're going to do this. And I want you to know that, that God has caused you to be a man of God. You have the power to become that. I want you to understand that. God breathed the breath of life in you. If you want to know, uh, get some more. Go to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. How God did it. God formed the dust of the ground. You're made out of something, that vessel you're made for God. You're made by the hands of God. You got to know that, that God is perfect, that everything about me is perfect. And I know that when I find my original purpose self, I'm going to be what God caused me to be. And I know that. It's not by accident that I'm tall. It's not by accident that I'm short. And I'm going to love the very thing that God has made. I'm going to learn how to love me because I was made in the image and likeness of God. And I am somebody. And I'm going to believe I'm somebody. And I'm somebody because of who my daddy is. And I'm telling you, as a man, you got to study God. God is a God who creates. God is a God of love. God is a God who forgives. And we must do it. And I challenge you to a greater, uh, enthused life, to be a deliberate. And as I come to a close, i got to go to work. But as I come to a close, I want you to say, I am deliberate in my praise for now on. I am deliberate in my lifestyle. I, I, deliberate. I mean, I'm doing it on purpose. I mean, I'm radical. I'm crazy for Jesus. You know, there's a song out by a, by a man, I forgot the name of the song, but he said, I'm crazy. The whole song he's singing, I'm crazy, crazy for you. No, I'm crazy for God. Man, are you crazy for God? Losing my mind so I can put on the mind of Christ. Asking God to deal with my heart issues. My heart issues. Purge me with him song. And I'm crying out. And I want you to join me in this cry. Join me in this race. Then we can say like Apostle Paul, I, I fought a good fight. I ran a race and I finished my course. You must know that without a doubt. And I come to tell you, this is Robert Jenkins and you are a man of God. And we're going to rise up and women begin to pray that men rise up. We're going to rise up. Take our place as being a right for daddy. Daddy here. Daddy's back. Daddy was off the journey for a minute, but daddy has returned to be the man. And you're not by yourself, son. You're not by yourself. Daddy going to show you because daddy been walking with his daddy now. And now daddy know how to be a daddy because daddy been walking with daddy. Very key. This is Robert Jenkins. God bless you. God has caused us to be a man.